Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to create a sprite class and I'm going to aim to actually draw something on the screen using that sprite class and uh, just in case you're not um, a games programmer uh, a sprite is, uh, the idea of a sprite is it, a sprite is something that represents something visually on the screen and sprites can have some kind of animation uh, in them which um, I'm not going to animate uh, the actual sprite itself here I'm going to move things around the screen but I'm not going to use different bitmaps to represent a sprite in different states so you, a sprite could represent someone walking on the screen and then you'd have different bitmaps for each phase of the walk and I'm not going to do that here but what I am going to do is I'm going to have a sprite class that I'm going to use to create my game objects which is going to be two bats and a ball in this case and uh, that's going to handle drawing itself on the screen and remembering its own position so let's right click here and go to new new class and I'll call this sprite and I'm, I'm not intending to use this um, I'm going to use child classes of this sprite but for the moment I'll use this class itself just to get something visually working that we can actually see and I'll add to this sprite as I go along but at the minimum it's going to have a public float X and a public float Y and let's give it a constructor like public sprite and we could give it maybe an initial position float X and float Y and you might wonder why, given that uh, positions on the screen are going to ultimately be integer values, why are we using float for x and y? And the answer is that we might want to add a speed to x and to y. And when we render the sprite, yeah, we have to we have to align it with a pixel boundary, so we have to translate these into integer values. But, to keep the animation as smooth as possible, we might nevertheless want to remember the float position. So we remember where the sprite should be precisely, but when we render it, we have to move it to the nearest pixel in effect. So I'm going to use float for X and Y for greater accuracy. And a sprite needs to be able to draw itself, of course. So let's say public void draw. And in order to draw itself, it's going to have to be passed to canvas to draw on. So I'm going to make the draw method accept a canvas. Let's add the input for that. And the sprite will have to update itself as well. So let's say public void update. And in order to update itself, it's going to need some information. And, well, it's, it's definitely going to need um, the amount of time that passed since the update was last called. And I, I probably want to pass it. it it's going. It's, yeah, I probably want to pass it the width and height of the screen because it's going to have to know what the width and height of the screen is. So let's um, let's probably pass that in here. Or another alternative is uh, we could supply it. Let's say to the constructor, which would also work. We can't supply the canvas to the constructor because every time we draw, we're going to lock lock the surface holder and get a new canvas so this is going to be different every time and the kind of width and height of the screen presumably will, will remain fixed so if we're not too worried about the user resizing the, the screen then potentially we could just pass it to the constructor which I'm, I'm quite tempted by that idea actually so I think I'll say int width and int, let's call it screen width and screen height and uh, I'm not even sure really about um, passing in an, an initial value for x and y because probably we could figure that out yeah let's, let's scrap that I'm kind of thinking on my feet slightly let's just initially hard code values for that um, but what I will do is I will um, have here 
that should be private of course I will have the width and height of the screen here so let's say private in screen and this this needs to be consistent as well screen width screen height screen width width and private int screen height and then let's say down here that this dot screen width equals screen width and this dot screen height equals screen height now the, uh, the sprite's going to have to load its um, bitmaps or it's going to have to get its bit get its bitmaps from somewhere so I think um, that being so let's maybe give it an init method public void init uh, now what this uh, what this accepts depends on um, what you kind of need to initialize your sprite with I suppose and I'm going to give my sprites at the minimum two graphics which are going to be this going to have like a main graphic that actually displays the actual sprite but it's also going to have a um, shadow as well which I've kept separate and as I said before you don't have to have a separate shadow but just for the purposes of this game I'm going to give it a separate shadow so to the init method I'm going to pass two bitmaps a, a bitmap which I'll call image maybe and a bitmap which I'll call shadow and again this, this is very specific to this particular little demo game and you, you won't necessarily want to have the same two bitmaps and I'm going to store those up here so private bitmap image and private bitmap shadow because um, I think that I'm going to do the actual loading of these bitmaps somewhere other than the sprite because um, I feel a bit um, unhappy about the idea of passing in the resources object to this to the actual sprites because then I'd be passing in a sort of a quite a high level object to quite a low level object uh, which is not necessarily bad but I somehow feel as though it's better to load stuff higher up the method hierarchy um, higher up the class hierarchy or the um, yeah higher, higher up the, the method stack and then just pass in the bitmaps here so to keep this sprite class relatively lightweight and to keep it away from dealing with loading resources and stuff like that now in draw we're gonna just draw the image and the shadow so I'll draw the shadow first because the image has got to go on top of it and I'll just say canvas dot draw and I want this draw bitmap draw bitmap this one um, well not actually that one but probably this one and I'll draw the shadow and left is going to be X and top is going to be Y and paint is going to be null because I, I don't think I'm going to be using that and then same again for the uh, for the for the actual image and the update is gonna the um, the kind of update method what that contains is gonna depend on the actual um, particular sprite that I'm implementing but now that I think of it probably what I'll do later on is remove that from here and put it in more specific classes because I'm not sure that I necessarily want to give every sprite an update because for example my bat which is going to be controlled by the player probably won't need an update method because it doesn't have any kind of internal updating to do so that's my sprite class and let's just see now if we can go ahead and use that in the game so uh, let's see um, yeah so I'll go to um, game here and um, init would be the logical place to load sprites and init is not called at the moment so I'm going to go to game runner 
and Game Runner calls update and draw but before it goes into the game loop which is here let's just put a comment game loop I could do an init so I could say here game dot init which is uh, probably a reasonable place to do it and by that time the game already has a surface holder and, and a resource object so I could I can make use of those there and I'm gonna let's give game for the moment a private sprite ball and this can be my kind of ball object and uh, although it's sort of a flattened ball in the case of these graphics that I'm using and in init I could load that I could say ball equals new sprite for the moment just to get this working and uh, if I look at sprite so that accepts the screen screen width and the screen height so I could um, I could pass that in by saying uh, I think I can anyway I don't know if we can get the screen width and the screen height from the holder actually um, probably I'd have to say holder.get surface.get uh, in fact, I don't, even, I don't even think we can get it here, which is a bit annoying. So I might have to rethink that. Um, yeah. Well, I could do something like in my game view. Um, in my game view, when I create the game, I could pass the width and height there into the game. Like I could say, get width and get height that might work um, let's, let's go to game and say int int width and int height well we'll soon know if it works or not and I'll go to yeah if I go to sprite here I'm storing the screen width and the screen height so let's just copy those and paste those into game because I need to store them in game as well and here I'll say this dot width this dot screen width equals width and this dot screen height equals height I always feel with this kind of stuff as though um, there must be a more elegant way of doing this but um, I guess I haven't done enough of it to really have a feel for what that is and in, he in here we can pass in screen width and screen height um, and so we've, we've, we've got the we've created the sprite and I need to initialize the sprite with bitmaps now I've already got some code in my main activity actually in the game view I think that uh, loads bitmaps here we go we've got this so if I just cut that for the moment and then go back to sprite in init no not in init yeah in game view actually no in game bear with me yeah so in game here I'm in it here I plan to initialize my sprite so that means that I can load a bitmap here and pass it to the sprite um, so I can say let's say bitmap bitmap let's call it ball equals bitmap factory dot decode resource and I pass in my resource object resources let's rename that to resources actually and here I pass in resources r.drawable.button so that's my ball image let's say and just add the import for bitmap and let's expand the editor here format the code and then I can pass in the ball shadow so ball shadow and my ID for that is 
button shadow actually I called it I called the actual image button for some reason and in fact um, maybe maybe instead of storing the screen width and screen height I could just use it in the constructor so I could actually call my sprite constructors in the constructor and then call init and init that has a certain elegance to it in fact I'll, I'll delete this here and let's just do that and this is going to be screen width this is going to be width and height so I think I think we're almost there now um, and I can say here ball dot init and pass it the ball image and ball shadow and now um, now we're getting to the magic bit because in draw now I can go ahead and try and draw this ball and to do that I need to get a canvas which I don't think I did in my game runner sometimes I do but here I haven't so in draw I'm going to say canvas canvas equals actually let me let me just check in game view yeah we've already gone through locking the canvas here so in fact I'm going to take this code out of here and uh, I'm going to do control X on that and for the moment I'm just going to return true from on touch event and not do anything with it yet and then in draw let's paste that code in so we lock the canvas in draw this is in game.draw and if it's not null then we can draw our sprites so I can say ball.draw canvas and I think that ought to work and let's run it and see I'm not sure if I missed anything but we'll give it a go so um, I hope that's not too confusing because uh, as, as you can tell I'm still kind of slightly deciding in my own mind how best to structure this but the bottom line is that we've we've got this game runner that's uh, running the game loop and that's calling on it on the game init update and draw and then game is going to have a bunch of different sprites and for all those different sprites game calls init and in update it's going to up tell the sprites to update themselves and in draw it will tell the sprites to draw themselves and the only complication here and the annoying stuff that I can never figure out to my own satisfaction is the stuff having to do with passing around global resources like width and height because I don't really want to make them totally global with a singleton or something um, and passing them around always feels a bit messy but um, this does the trick okay so that's running on my phone now and I'll just show you that this is what it looks like and it looks terrible and the reason for that is that I haven't, um, I haven't drawn a colour in the background so let's just fix that before we leave this tutorial and um, in game in draw if I've locked the canvas I actually just want to say canvas.draw colour colour.white to give it a white background in this, in this case and let's run that and probably what I'm going to look at in the next tutorial is uh, probably creating some more sprites or actually you know it'll be quite exciting to actually get this ball to bounce around the screen so maybe we'll look at that and that's certainly something that we need to do okay so it's let's check on the progress it's now starting and I'll show you my phone here it is so we've got the ball on the screen so we're back to where we were several tutorials ago but the great thing is we've now got a structure in place and we're now running a game loop and all we have to do now is put some code in update and this ball will actually move around the screen believe it or not so that's it for this tutorial thank you for bearing with me with all my dithering about heights and widths and until next time happy coding